The agenda items considered by this assembly will be international terrorism, sustainable development goals, and the situation in Middle East. We shall consider the first item now. I have a list of speakers, and I now request the distinguished delegate of Pakistan to make the statement. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, I congratulate you on your assumption as the President of the General Assembly for this particular year. And I also take this opportunity to thank the work of the distinguished delegate from Denmark as the former President of the General Assembly. Madam President, I'll be speaking on the measures to eliminate the international terrorism as we ourselves being a nation which has been deeply disturbed by the persistence of terrorist attacks. Terrorism has caused enormous loss of human life and destruction and damage to the stability of the whole world. In this year, 2016, where we are celebrating the 10th anniversary of the United Nations Global Counterterrorism Strategy, let's recall the fact that the strategy, which is a unique global instrument to enhance the national, regional, and the international efforts to counter terrorism was also approved by our nation. In order to maintain the peace and prosperity for succeeding generations, yet our nation not free from clutches of terrorism. Madam President, we know that the uprisings are indigenous in nature. So India should realize that its strategy in the health territory has not borne fruit. As Kashmir's recent history has shown, brutal state repression will only further alienate the Kashmiris and cause the disenchanted youth to pick up the guns. Madam President, we know Jammu and Kashmir is never a land that belongs to India. And the final status is yet to be determined in accordance with the several resolutions. But one thing, the right of Kashmiri people to self-determination is already approved by India, Pakistan, as well as the United Nations. And we also believe that the Kashmiri people are leading a legitimate struggle. Madam President, let me state, all the concerns that India had given to Baluchistan was just a cover-up to the Kashmiri issues. All we witnessed was just a copycat move. Madam President, India has been and remains Pakistan's major external adversary since 1947. The origin of this relate directly or indirectly to the legacies of independence and involve not only military issues but also water security, trade and investment issues. For us to solve the problem, the solution must address the root causes. Madam President, in addition to the issues on our eastern border, let me express our concern for the threat posed by India on our western border. The alleged support by Indian intelligence operatives in Afghanistan to Baloch militants within the park is an example of it. We cannot tolerate the external interference of this sort anymore, which is obviously a serious threat to our people. Madam President, let me state the interference of India in the economic and other related matters of Pakistan is not appreciable. Madam President, let me conclude by stating that the state of Pakistan has played a key role in United Nations peacekeeping programs in different parts of the world, most prominently in Somalia, Liberia, and so. Madam President, let me remind, currently, Pak stands as the largest contributor of troops to United Nations peacekeeping missions in the world. And moreover, being a country that has diseased by the vermins of terrorism, will do our utmost to provide help and support to maintain peace and security as per the United Nations agenda. Thank you. I thank the distinguished delegate of Pakistan.